thanks for joining me on our pre thanks for joining me on our October of Chasing Mysteries Gardens. I'm Rebecca and along with my wife Karen we are on a mission to renovate and rejuvenate our little piece of earth. Today we're going to be doing the before October tour. So what that means is that this will show you what the garden and our yard looks like before we clean up for the winter. So everything is pretty much nearing its end and we will be spending the next few weeks uh, getting the gardens ready. I've got a lot of plans for garlic in my garden this year and so this is just a tour to show you what it looks like as of right now. So come along with me on this tour as we take a look at our October garden. This is a typical fall day here where we live. Dreary, rainy, it rained like crazy the last two days. The ground is just saturated. Karen wants to mow the lawn, but it's just way too wet. So here is our little orchard. <laughs> we have the peach tree is losing all of its leaves. pear tree. So what we're going to do to winterize these is get some supports so that the winter winds will attach it to the trunk there on each of them just to support them through the winter. It can be really windy here. So this is the garbage garden. Still looks pretty good. The ferns are dead. We got one flower off of our Rose of Sharon. I was able to harvest five little peppers off of this. And there is a couple more growing, but there is no way that those are gonna be mature before the frost. And there's only one on here. It's probably not worth taking inside. So I've been spending a lot of time learning about just the wild things that are growing in our yard. And this is actually a medicinal plant. I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but I'm going to dry it and use it in tea. If you have things growing in your yard, please be sure to do research on them before you eat or drink anything, just to make sure that it's safe. So we do have some weeds here, this stuff. So Karen put down this fabric, but in the holes where that she created around the actual plants, the weeds have poked through. Look at that, that's huge.
Here is the garden. This is kohlrabi that I planted late in the season. Uh, I, I planted way more than this and the squirrels just came in here and dug up the ground so I kind of gave up and then the bugs moved in and kind of ate the branches but now that it's cooling off these are really starting to pick up so I don't think they'll become mature before the frost but I will leave those in the ground. Something I just noticed this looks like an onion. I wonder why it's choosing now to grow. <laughs> so I had onions growing in this whole area in the spring. I must have missed one. So there are still a few beans here and there that I've just been picking and snacking on. There's not enough to really can or pickle anymore. So we've just been eating, eating them for meals. The plants are still getting flowers, but you can see that the leaves are just starting to die. So here's some little tiny babies. So the beans took over the marigolds. There were cucumbers here and I pulled those out. So on this side, I still have a bunch of basil that I'm going to dry. And the reason why there are forks is because I planted carrots and spinach in here in the, in the fall. And I thought, maybe if I put forks, it would keep the squirrels out. Yeah, no, that didn't work. So I got zero carrots and zero spinach. Again, there's more bean flowers. Oh, wow, there's a bunch of beans there. Maybe we'll have some for dinner. So I have quite a few green tomatoes still on the vines. I'm gonna leave them on as long as possible. There are a few cucumbers, but they just look sad and discolored. This is Sherry. There are some flowers, but again, they're both male flowers. We're not gonna get anything else off of this. And then I do have some, a couple Roma tomatoes back there. The herb garden is pretty much done for. There are a few dill flowers that are still gonna put on some seeds. So this, yesterday, was just a bunch of parsley, and I cut it all back and put it in the dehydrator, and now, because of all the rain, it's still growing from the center. So as long as you don't pick these center leaves, stems, it will continue to grow. I've got a few. Let's turn these into volunteers, shall we? See what happens next year. <laughs> This plant was a birthday present for me back in April, and it's pretty much done. So it's been so warm that the daylilies have started growing again. So our grass is probably 
10 to 12 feet tall. Now that the tassels are on it, Karen tied it all back so it wasn't in the walkway and on the stairs, but it's just giant. We are still getting a few roses here and there. They keep popping out. The hostas are done. The gladiolas are done. All of this will be cut back. Clematis. Butterfly bush still has a few holding on. The leaves in our area are starting to turn and that includes this, I don't know the name of this plant, it's just a giant, giant bush. But the inside of it always turns brown. It does stay green all winter, but the inside kind of dies away as it grows out. So our peonies are just covered in powdery mildew. It's been so wet and so shady over here that it's it's at the end of the season anyway, so it doesn't matter. This we always cut back. We'll put our ducks away. So the berries, this blackberry grew like crazy. So I see one, two, three, four canes have grown since I bought it. And they're just so long. The blueberry, the raspberry. So here's some more of that. Karen likes to call it a weed. To some people, that's what it is. This marigold bush is doing really well. Oh look, we have some new growth on the hydrangea. I like leaving the flowers on, even though technically they're dead. Um, you can take these in and dry them, but I like to leave them on the bush because it just looks like a flower all season. But also they change color, so they started as really pale pink and now part of it where it's not shaded or where I'm sorry where it is shaded turned like a light green but then where the sun hit it is this red slash dark pink
So that is our rhubarb. Did not do well enough for us to pick this year. It was only the first, it was actually the second year in the ground here. So we went on vacation and when we came back, I don't think anyone had watered and we lost our bird, bird gourd, birdhouse gourds. There's a tiny one, but it's rotted there. And then over here we do have one. This is the, the big one that was growing. So it's still, it's still pretty heavy. It still looks okay. The vines are very yellow, so I don't know if it's going to grow any bigger, which is sad. But you can only do so much, and we planted it really late. So here in the front yard, we have just flowers are falling over because of the rain. We had one, the white flower right there was a gladiola, but it fell over in the rain. In the yard this year, we had all kinds of mushrooms. And I don't know enough about mushrooms to know if these are edible to humans or not. So it looks like animals have tried to pick them and eat them. And if they left them here, then probably not. It's a pretty brown one. So now that the evenings are getting cooler, the snapdragons are coming back. So you can see all the little pink flowers on that. So I call these my spaceship flowers. I just think they're the coolest things. And here they are in purple. So you can see all of the daisies and flowers are just dead. Even the fall mums are starting to die away. We have the tiniest little pansies still coming up. There's a couple more flowers on there. We've got some pumpkins. The plants on the deck are still doing fine. These two plants died about 10 times this year and they always come back with water. Karen bought me more dill. This was the only dill she could find at the store and it's too late to put it in the ground now. One of my favorite flowers are Gerbera daisies. Is the jungle of wildflowers and actually, you probably can't see them. There are several bees still collecting the pollen off of these flowers. 
a lot of flowers die away so quickly here in the early fall so it's nice to have these out a little bit longer for the bees to go as long as they can. So these they're really wet from the rain. I probably should let them dry out but these are called Cosmos and I'm going to collect um, sorry, I'm going to collect the seeds to plant elsewhere next year. And oh, I'm trying to get this. Oh. So that little bee had a bunch of pollen on its legs. It was super cute. And these I learned, whoop. These I learned are giant marigolds. hoping to be able to save these seeds off these dahlias. So back in here, there's more spearmint, some oregano, I'm sorry, uh, basil. So this side right here, this is supposed to be lettuce and this is supposed to be radishes, but again, heat and bugs just beat me this year. The blueberry's looking good. It's got three really new, big new branches this year. So back in here, you can also see, well, these are supposed to be radishes down in there too. But I don't think I'm gonna get any. So I'm gonna plant, pick all my basil and dry that. I'm going to dry this um, lemon verbena. I'm gonna dry this spearmint. I'm gonna dry the other spearmint. This is oregano, thyme, more oregano. I wish that you could uh, dry this nasturtium. I wonder if you can, if anybody knows, if you can dry this and use it in tea or add it to soups or anything, please put it in the comments below. So this is some rosemary, a lot of it turned yellow. And then just my sad, sad raspberry plant. I won't prune this until the spring. And then these are my pepper plants. So I'm going to actually just pick these. Look at how pretty that is. This is a jalapeno. I'm going to pick them all, even though some of them are a little small. It's really, when the stem dries like that, it's time to pick regardless of size. And then when the skin starts to split like that, if you can tell, that means the pepper is actually getting hotter. So I'm going to, we really enjoyed the jalapeno poppers I made. So I'm gonna make those again. Whoops. Uh oh. This one looks like it might have a friend inside. Um, I'll leave that one. I'll leave, there's a couple tiny ones. Um, this one, oh, sorry. This one, I'm gonna pick, it doesn't look good. There's a bug, it's not, it's yellowish here, so.
And then back here is my sriracha peppers, which I did not plant enough to, I can't get it with one hand, to actually make sriracha sauce. Oh, see, I left, I left this on here way too long. It's got a bite, it's got mold on the top, it's soft and squishy. That is just garbage. I put bird netting over this because the stupid squirrels. And now I can't get the peppers out. So even though these are green, I'm still gonna pick it. Thanks for joining me on our October tour through the garden. Again, this is the pre-October, this is early October, so over the next couple of weeks, we will be cleaning up, cutting back, putting away everything that we head out for the summer. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up and also be sure to hit the subscribe button for more, including our after October video. And as always, Suki Suki, love the earth, Love yourself, love each other. Till next time.